Okay, well, thank you for coming in, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. I run the Probrick Exclusive channel for the Tradies, which is a new channel, and the Pro Theologist channel for the more um, theological people. <coughs> Excuse me. In our last, just to recapitulate, our last one, we realise that it's not good to move away from the morals and things that matter that make life safe, that protect our mental health, our physical health, and the things around us to keep us in place. Boundaries, uh, I really think boundaries goes with spoil the rod, spare the rod, spoil the child. Spare the boundaries, spoil the child. You'll find that a lot of dysfunctional families do not understand boundaries. Or if they have boundaries, they're selfish and they change and they move and you can't work out where you're supposed to position yourself in the person's life. It's very, very difficult. <coughs> Excuse me. But the Bible says the glory of the children is their father. And this is massive because it comes down to what the father has shown their children in the domestic home. And without Christianity, they can't go beyond the failings of their father to the heavenly father and put things back in order. A lot of these people are just left to flounder, which is complete negligence and abuse. They're just left to flounder at the mercy of what they can figure out themselves. And many of these people have a Christian pedigree. They do have a long lineage of Christians in their family, and that doesn't mean they're going to be perfect, but they can build on that knowledge to mould themselves into the person that God created them to be. Um, in Ephesians 2, just quickly... I didn't plan this, but Ephesians 2, I'm sure it's Ephesians 2. <clears throat> and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about the dead. They're not awake. They can't tell dysfunction. They can't discern what they're doing. They've got no self-awareness. In which you used to walk when you were conformed to the ways of this world and of the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the sons of disobedience. This is the co-mutual assignment of Satan and his demons to work in conjunction with the reckless and careless living that the sinful nature puts us into. You can associate um, demonic uh, <coughs> um, presence in, around a person and inside a person relative to their, the way in which they live and how far away they are from God. I've had a lot of girlfriends that have been completely demonized and you could tell. Um, I've seen the black eyes, completely black. They go black, their eyes go black and you go, whoa. All of us also lived among them at one time fulfilling the cravings of our flesh and indulging its desires and thoughts. There's the malignant narcissist, and you can add everything else to that. The sinful nature's really potently at work there. Like the rest were by nature children of wrath. Now, <clears throat> because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses. It's by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places, in order that in the coming ages he might display the surpassing riches of his grace demonstrated by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus, says the Lord Jesus Christ. There he is, the big power. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And here we go. 
For we are God's workmanship. We are the Father's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which the Father prepared in advance as our way of life. And not many people realize this. Um, they don't put the work in to realize the gifts and treasures that they have in their Christian heritage and instead they mock it and dissolve their place in it. It doesn't have to be that way. Do not move the values, the boundaries, the morality, the integrity that's given to us through our Christianity which the Heavenly Father has placed there before us so that we could walk in Him. <clears throat> verse 29. And this is the last verse in Proverbs 22. Thank you for coming all this way with me. It's a tremendous effort. Give yourself a pat on the back and I hope you've learnt a tremendous lot. Psychology through theology. Keeping it simple. Do you see a person skilled in their work? They will be stationed in the presence of kings, and they will not stand. Before obscure men. This is the person that has discernment. They're able to see where things are getting out of hand and going astray. They have the courage to be able to speak up, and they're not negligent themselves. They have the courage also to listen and be corrected and to be corrected where they need to be. They're skilled. They're skilled in the understanding of the psychology of man and the theology of God. They understand how life works and what makes it and what doesn't. They have boundaries. Their issues have been recognized and they are at work at fixing them if they haven't already. They're stationed in the presence of the kings. They know their authority. They've made life right for where they're at. They're at one with themselves and the people around them. They're skilled at knowing what to do and what not to do, when to do it and when not to do it. They present themselves in a way in which they make an impact. And they do not mix with people that are obscure. Now, if we go back up, it all seems to tie in, doesn't it? They don't mix with the slackers. They don't mix with the frustrators. They mix with those who love a pure heart and gracious lips. They drive out mockers and, and conflict. They remove themselves from it. <clears throat> they don't like quarrelling and insults. They put themselves in a position where all that ceases. They're generous and they share their bread with the poor. They're not frightened to tell people where things could be better for the relationship. They don't sow injustice or reap disaster. And the rod of their fury the bad people's fury, they know how to destroy it by removing themselves from it. They drive out the trouble. If trouble people turn and change, they know how to remove that person or, or remove themselves. One thing or another is the mocker and the conflict, the quarreling and the insults, they're going to cease. It won't be tolerated. And that's how you find yourself in the presence of kings, at one with yourself. <clears throat> you see, it's all about being at one with ourselves. Now we've got the dog there. Excuse me, viewers, the little dog. It's chewing up its toy. It's about being one with ourselves and the people around us. It's about unity. It 
It's about faith in one another. It's about believing in one another. It's about hoping for the best in one another. But those that are obscure about themselves, those that turn to drink, drugs, medications, they don't do the psychological work for themselves, these people are not where the skilled man is. I'll tell you why. The darkness cannot comprehend the light. It's too much for them. The vibration and energy just makes life too difficult for these people to be able to function. The light makes these people confused, un uncertain, unstable, because they don't know how to read it, they're not ready to accept it, and they don't want to come into it. These are the lepers. These are the people that Jesus came to heal, and he's come to heal you, if you're willing to accept it. That's what this is all about. This is the big crescendo. You have the light there. It's been there the whole time. And now it's a matter of whether you're going to enable yourself and skill yourself in the work that you need to do to bring yourself out of the darkness and into the light, out of the obscurity and into the clarity. Because it's up to you about where you want to stand in your life and who you want to how are you going to stand before yourself are you going to at the end are you going to just be obscure because you were lazy or you're going to be skilled because you did the work are you going to be obscure because you just well like the proverb says the man puts his hand into the bowl but cannot so much as bring it to his mouth or are you going to be the one that walks in the spirit and learns and builds and believes. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will be stationed in the presence of kings and he will not stand before obscure men. Do you see a person skilled in their work? They will be stationed in the presence of kings and they will not stand before obscure men. You do not have to suffer at the hands of sinful people, relationship or not. S make yourself skilled in psychology and theology. <clears throat> Remove yourself from the toxins of the enemy, the devil and his cronies and his flying monkeys that encourage you to do those things and be able to walk, to stand, and be stationed in the presence of kings and removed from the obscurity of yourself and the flying monkeys that want you to stay that way. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Bye for now.